men did not sit down and design our culture to suit themselves and keep women down. The reason for this arrangement was that if women were to have babies, if the tribe was to reproduce, a system of concessions was required which allowed for the uncertainty of women to know when they might be pregnant and for how long they might be caring for infants. Marriage itself was created as one such concession. Marriage is primarily a social construct designed to protect and nurture women who could not control fertility. One of the vows of getting married is that you accept responsibility for somebody for life. This is why sex before marriage has always been a volatile issue in Western societies, especially before the contraceptive pill. The overriding issue was that because fertility couldn't be controlled, any woman who had sex could become pregnant. If the man she had sex with was not committed to her, there was a big problem. Marriage guaranteed as far as possible that the man having sex with her was willing to support any resulting child. Birth control provided by the pill has wildly changed this maxim. Because of the complete control that women now have over fertility, society no longer attempts to enforce a link between sex and commitment. This might seem liberating for both sexes, but in fact, only women have been liberated by the pill. Men have been enslaved. Despite the complete, 100% control women have over creating children, given to them by the pill and other methods, they have still chosen to force fatherhood on men who do not want to be fathers. What it's really meant is that millions of men who don't want children, are not ready for children, or who can't afford them, are being forced into fatherhood by women after casual sexual encounters that were never intended to produce a family. Broken families are inevitably the outcome. Men of today's older generation grew up with overbearing chivalry, where it was held that civilised men protected women against anything and everything, and treated women as superior beings. Men would stand up when a woman came to a table, and men would stand up when a woman left a table, or cover a puddle with their coats. As a consequence, women were seen by men and by women as needing protection, just like children. To this day, men still protect women at the expense of themselves. Women are happy for this to continue and allow it to continue, whilst all the while claiming that they want equality. If you don't mind my being crude, the boss is in a men's room. No, that's not crude. Well, you never know how you're going to offend some broad these days. I remember opening a door to a woman, actually, um, kind of last year. I opened a door to a woman, and she turned around and swore at me <laughs> of opening the door for her. And you suddenly find you're getting up to off your seat and you're getting a mouthful from her, or you open the door and she'll huff away past. Or These women will complain that a man is a chauvinist when he opens a door for them, but will say nothing when they're rescued first and he's left to drown. Considering all this, how can patriarchy exist? If patriarchy existed, circumcision of boys would be outlawed as it is for girls. We're happy to accept male circumcision, but not female circumcision. Female circumcision is considered abuse, regardless of religious imperative. Why are boys not protected in the same way? If patriarchy existed, it would be women dying on our battlefields and women digging up our coal. Only women would be sweeping our streets and collecting our rubbish. Where a woman wasn't strong enough for a task, we'd use two women. It would be women working until age 65, and men working until 60 to earn a pension. Women will often compare their supposed oppression under patriarchy to the legitimate trials of the black civil rights movement. You have no idea how hard it is. I have no idea? Look, I'm not going to fight about whether in medicine it's harder being black or a woman. Black! Woman! Much prop, Dr. Rhodes. Mm. Go get him. To outlaw discrimina di discrimination against you if you're black, if you're a woman. But women have never had to sit at the back of the bus, have never been ghettoized, and have never been prevented from eating or drinking in shops. Women have never been arrested, beaten, lynched, or hanged for being women. In contrast, women have always been sheltered and protected from the harshness of reality, whilst men, and even boys, dealt with problems. Chong Cha goes on patrol with a 13-year-old boy whom he instructs in the dangers of government ambushes and landmines. We have been fighting and protecting our women and children since 1975 till now. I was about his age, and now I am 42 years old and still doing the same thing. If we're looking at enlightenment and of the struggle away from victimhood, um, women have, have, haven't had that big a problem moving away from victimhood. They certainly hasn't been in, in the league of the struggle, for example, of, of blacks in America moving away from victimhood, or, um, or the Jews in Germany moving away from victimhood, or the Palestinians currently trying to move away from victimhood. It has, certainly hasn't been in that class of struggle. Um, <laughs> that's likely to get be unpopular, but let's face it, it hasn't. 
Women have more disposable income than men due to having access to men's money as well as their own. Women, by and large, um, in term, have 70% of the spending power in the Western societies. They spend 70% of the money. Women also have longer lifespans. In the UK, the average life expectancy for women is 81. The average male life expectancy is 76. Never in the history of mankind has an oppressed people lived for longer and had more money to spend than their oppressors. And it's not a little more money, it's a lot more. Young women have been avoiding central London since the July terror bombings. It's a trend that's worrying retailers. Um, I don't really like to come into the capital, uh, not really often, no. So how does the West End woo us women back? This is why shops always have the men's department upstairs or downstairs or out of sight at the back of the store. Shops are overwhelmingly designed for women. What the city experts say is this, the key to the whole show is women's wear. If you get that right, everything else falls into place. If you, go, if you don't get that right, it doesn't matter what you do with men's wear and food, nothing works. So it's all about women's wear. As a result of this invented idea of patriarchy, we've attempted to swing the pendulum back the other way in order to be fairer to women. Do not try and bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realise the truth. What truth? There is no spoon. There is no pendulum. It's not the case now, nor has it ever been true, that men had things good at the expense of women. If we put down men in order to boost oppressed women, as has been happening for the last 50 years, but women are not actually being oppressed, you end up with discrimination against men. This is what's happening in employment today. Women are being favoured in all areas of the workforce at the expense of men. We feel that by being biased towards females, we're making up for our past oppression of them. We will legislate to give more scope for employers if they want to increase the number of women or black or Asian employees to take positive action. Every time we give her a job and he's left unemployed, every time she gets a promotion and he's denied one, every time she's selected for a university course and he's turned away, we believe that this is some small compensation to women for past abuses. But what if those abuses never happened?